We're next going to turn to Miami show band survivor, uh, Stephen Travers. Stephen, you were actually in a band. I think you were called the Irish Beatles. Uh, you played all sorts of music. You had members in the band. You played rock music. You had The band had seven number one hits in Ireland, I believe. Uh, you had one member of the band who was, his father was in the Orange Order. They're non-political. You'd actually played a gig or an event or performance in Banbridge, which is a town that's two thirds majority unionist. Um, you're on your way back to Dublin that night. You get stopped by a patrol of the Ulster Defense Regiment, uh, which is a regiment of the British Army. You put a side of the road, you're cooperating with them. This is something commonplace. And actually somebody that you believe was a, a, an English officer came along. Could you just take us and you, they were some joking back and forth. There were people at the back of the car. Uh, you expected that they would let you go, that you would proceed on, take the next night off. What happened from that point on to the Miami show band, the event that's known as the Miami show band massacre? Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to tell my story. Uh, I must add, however, that the hor uh, horrific as my story is, it must not be held up in isolation to use as a stick to beat any one community, because since terrible atrocities were committed against both communities, and anyone who had hand act or part in any of these atrocities must be held accountable. Yes, we were a, a very, very popular band. Uh, we certainly weren't the Beatles. Um, uh, but we love the Beatles. Uh, either way, either way, um, uh, we didn't have a sectarian bone in our bodies. We knew nothing about politics. Uh, I came from South Tipperary, so uh, the troubles may have been a million miles away. Uh, on that particular night, uh, we were stopped, as you say, and we were asked um, to get out. The plan was to plant a 10 pound bomb under the driver's seat, and we would then be told to Thanks very much for your cooperation and off you go. And um, the bomb, according to forensics, would have exploded about 10 to 15 minutes on the way home, maybe perhaps in, in the center of Newry or just crossing the border. So we would have been gone down in history as terrorists. And that to me is an even worse uh, a, a sentence than, than death. Uh, but while they were planting the bomb under the driver's seat, two men unfortunately blew themselves up and there was very, there was nothing left of them and uh, it lifted me into the air and I was blown into the field, uh, which was, we were standing in front of this field with our hands on our heads and I fell down into the, about three meters down into the field. And the others, some of the others fell on top of me as well. The band, uh, the bandwagon, as you, the Volkswagen minibus, as you can see from a lot of the photographs now, was completely annihilated. Um, and when I hit the ground, the others got up and they tried to drag me out into the, further into the field to safety. Uh, but I was already shot. I had been shot by what they call a dum dum bullet, which exploded on impact. Uh, went, uh, it exploded into 16 pieces inside me and exited under my left arm. So I had very, very bad injuries. Um, while they were dragging me out, uh, one of them, which we now think was uh, Brian McCoy, one of the Protestant lads in our band, although I didn't know what religion they were until afterwards. Um, he was murdered. He was shot in the back of the head, in the back, in the hands and the arms, were trying to save me. The, the irony of that shouldn't be missed. Um, the other two lads, Fran O'Toole, our lead singer, was, was shot, given a particularly bad death. He was, I heard them all scream for help, uh, scream not to be shot. And uh, they shot Fran 22 times, seven of those were in the face. And they shot my friend, a great friend, the guitar player, um, a number of times in the back of the head. And uh, I pretended to be dead. And when the screaming stopped. Uh, this particular soldier walked around. Uh, there was a number of them in the field. I'll never forget. There's two things I'll always remember. One was the, the obscenities of the soldiers, uh, the cursing and swearing as they kicked the bodies to make sure they were dead and firing into the dead bodies. And also the, the smell of burning blood. Um, and one of the soldiers walked over to me and uh, I pretended to be dead. I kept my face against, against the ground and uh, I was expecting him to fire into me. Uh, and he didn't, for some reason or other, um, somebody on the, on the road shouted down, uh, uh, come on, those bastards are dead. I got them with dum-dums. All right. And, now, uh, Stephen, let me... turned away. Okay. Um, 
you thought a number of those people were members of the Ulster Defense Regiment, but there were also others. They were just loyalist paramilitaries. There's a belief that Robin Jackson was involved in the incident. I believe fingerprints were linked to it. Uh, the Glen Ann gang, which was involved with 120 killings, including the Dublin Monaghan bombings. But for a long time, you were of the belief that it was just a few bad apples in the also Defense Regiment of the British Army cooperating. Uh, how did you come to believe that it was much higher than that and you take your case right to suing the British Ministry of Defense and the Royal Ulster Constabulary? Yes, yeah, so one correction there. Um, uh, we now know that everybody that we know of, and we know there were, we, uh, there were three uh, convictions and two involuntary suicides, if that's the right term to use. We now know that every single one of the people that we know of uh, uh, were either serving members of the UDR or uh, had been serving members, including Robin Jackson. Uh, and uh, also uh, every single weapon associated with the killing of the Miami show band originated from the security forces. So we know this uh, further down the road. I mean, yes, you're right. Uh, I, it wasn't that I, I, I didn't believe, I didn't want to believe that, that, um, that uh, a country, a friendly country, our neighboring country uh, would, would target me and shoot me or the kill our lads. Uh, I, I just didn't want to believe it. But then I was, uh, I was faced with uh, just evidence, especially uh, from uh, unearthed by Margaret Orwin from the Justice for the Forgotten Group. And then the HET, the Historical Inquiries team. And the evidence was just so overwhelming that, uh, that I had to, I had to uh, accept that this was collusion between uh, the British, British Army and in, in fact, at the incident itself, one of our lads uh, nudged my arm and said, don't worry, Steve, this is a British army. And I, I reported that at the time of the end, uh, at the first trials. And I was told by the, uh, by the uh, uh, prosecution counsel who should have been on our side that it wasn't relevant. So all of these things played into it. I have absolutely no, no doubt whatsoever now that it went right to the top. And that's why we've taken a court case against the MOD and the the chief constable of the PSNI. And in the new British proposals, they say they're going to terminate uh, any kind of civil actions. They, may, they won't be allowing investigations. You had a historical inquiries team investigation. Um, they won't be allowing those in future through a historical investigations uh, unit, which they had agreed with the Irish government. What did that mean to you if you couldn't proceed with your civil case, if you had not been allowed the historical investigations that you did have? First of all, they can't. Uh, they can't retrospectively uh, cancel a, a case that's going. That's already. They, they say they might. I, I don't know if they can or not, but uh, well, they say they, they, they might in the document. Yeah, well, they say they say they say a lot of things. They can't do that. Either way, I do feel sorry for those who who will be denied or per perhaps could be denied future uh, cases. If uh, uh, let me put it this way, the consequences of that. They say that over the gates of hell, uh, written a number of words, abandon hope all ye who enter here. Now, what they've done here uh, is they've tried to take away the one thing that sustained all the people, whether they were impacted by, by, uh, by either side, whether it was by, by loyalist state or Republican violence. They've, the one thing that sustained them has been the hope, and they've tried to take that away. They must not be allowed to take that away. When you consider last week, Last week, or sorry, last year, there was a 93-year-old uh, um, Nazi uh, war criminal. Uh, he, was, he was convicted of over 2,000 um, counts of accessory to murder. And he was 93. And I just wonder if the British government would have tried to stop that case. Uh, you, can't, you can't do that. It's, uh, it's, it's an abomination against the law. Okay. Um, thank you again. Uh, it's uh, it's very heartening to be in your in uh, your company, especially Jacqueline and and Mark. Um, if I can just uh, address the the sobering uh, uh, interjection that that John DC made there with regard to anybody anybody uh, Irish Americans that may be complacent or think that it didn't happen to them. Let me just point something out that the intention on the night that we were attacked. The plan was not just to attack a band, a pop group. That, that was, wasn't a, enough for them. Had they successfully framed us and had they successfully uh, um, 
told the world that that this band that was loved universally loved and made up of Catholics and Protestants were were gun runners or were were terrorists. That was one thing. But had it worked that any member of the Senate, any member of Congress with an Irish name would have been pulled over to the side when entering, uh, getting on an airplane, an an airport anywhere in the world, they tried to demonize the Irish. They tried to frame every one of us as gun runners to take the credibility from decent people. That's something that perhaps uh, our good friends in the Senate and, and uh, uh, Congress uh, should, should understand that they were not, they're not just, it's not just something that happened to somebody else. This, this was an effort to frame every single Irish person in the world, especially with an Irish name, as terrorists.